attempt 501 to get my camera to stay. Okay! What's up, guys? We have so much to catch up on. Like, so much, you guys. So much to talk about. Got my matcha. Came to this cute little coffee shop, got some matcha. First and foremost, how is everyone doing? I haven't posted on YouTube in a minute, and I wanted to catch you guys up on everything that's happening, talk about a few current event stuff. I'm like moving it out of the sun here. There's like a sun patch here. When it comes to social media, I'm the most active on Instagram. It's just the easiest for me. It's probably the platform that I enjoy interacting with people the most just because you have stories and posts and everything. Um, I post on TikTok some. I feel like YouTube ends up always getting like the short end of the stick because I'm so used to creating YouTube content that is like makeup tutorials and like high production and cameras and lighting and all, all of this stuff. And just being honest, like YouTube is the hardest and longest to edit. And on Instagram, I can like post stuff if I'm glam or not. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you're following me on Instagram. That's just where I post the most. It's so weird how social media has advanced because like YouTube used to be the thing and then it was Instagram and now like it's TikTok, but then people are still on Instagram and there's just so many social media platforms to keep up with. And just because I'm not posting on here doesn't mean I'm not thinking about you guys, but as I've gotten older, as I have, you know, started new projects and started working on new things, there was a time and place in my life where all I thought about was YouTube and not like in a healthy way. In like any time I would do my makeup, I'm like, I need to film this for YouTube, gotta get a picture for Instagram. And it was like social media content was all I thought about all the time. And I've been on YouTube, I think it's been like 10 years now. And that's a, a long time in social media. It's a lot of content. And I want to create YouTube videos whenever I'm inspired to create. I want it to be quality over quantity. It's been a few years now where I don't feel guilty anymore when I don't post as much as I think I should post. Because, you know, social media used to be an escape for us to, like, escape the real world. And now the real world is where we escape social media. And it's crazy to think about. And... I just really value spending time outside and in nature and with my family and with God, really. And I've been in this season where I feel like I've just been walking in the wilderness. And I've been in this refining season that God has put me in and I definitely needed it. It's like it says in scripture that God tests us and refines us like silver, it says in the book of Psalms. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but to refine silver, you know that it's ready when the silversmith can see his face in the silver and he has to stay there with it in the fire the entire time. He doesn't leave it. And it's so beautiful how God used that in the Bible because like he is with us in the fire the entire time. And then when we reflect him, when we reflect God, we are then refined. And I've been in this season the last couple of years. It has tested me, it has tried me, and God has been so kind and so sweet, even in the hard times, even in the doubt, even in all of the trials and obstacles that I've dealt with the last couple of years just for speaking truth, just for using my voice, just for daring to bring anything against the mainstream narrative. And I just now feel like I'm starting to walk out of the wilderness. And as one of my friends had told me, it's like you're starting to see the rain and the rain is the blessing from God. And I've been working on something for years, and a lot of you guys probably know what I'm talking about. I've hinted at it a lot, but I've been working on something for years, and I cannot wait. It's going to be soon. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. And when I started this project, I didn't understand what God was doing. I didn't understand what he wanted from me, but I understand it now. And if this would have happened any other time than now, it wouldn't have been what it's become. It wouldn't be what it is now. And having been in the beauty industry for so long, I've seen so much, I've experienced so much, I've been through so much, and the beauty industry is a very toxic place. It just is. And the beauty industry also has a stronghold on a lot of people, and I didn't realize it until really the last couple of years. And when I moved from L.A. back to Tennessee... And when I moved to Nashville, I had some healing to do. 
And through that healing, I found my voice. I got closer to God. I got closer to the Lord. But when you follow Jesus, you are born again. Your whole life changes. It renews and transforms your mind, like the scripture says. And I see the world and I see things in a completely different way than I used to. And I've never felt more joy, more peace, or more freedom than I have in Jesus. And it's one of those things where I know not everyone will understand it, but I hope that everyone will one day because, you know, I don't talk about the things I talk about to be offensive or to hurt people's feelings. The problem is, is that there are so little people speaking truth that the truth always comes off as harsh. You know, and people say like, oh, you know, I'm so, so happy that you're being bluntly honest. And it's like, it shouldn't be bluntly honest. It should just be honest. But people are so used to lies that when they hear the truth, it shocks them. If you're not seeking the truth and looking for it and you're arming yourself in the full armor of God, if you're not on that truth seeking path, you're living in your comfort zone, which a lot of it is probably lies. If you're getting all of your information from the news or from social media or, you know, from all of these biased owned sources, you're not getting your discernment from the Holy Spirit. Discernment and knowledge comes from God. Discernment comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives within us and it guides us. And the Lord is very clear that he will show you things that are unknown, that he will give you knowledge, that his knowledge is better than gold or silver. And the problem is a lot of people, Christian or not, are getting their discernment from the media and not the Holy Spirit. So they're walking in the flesh and not the spirit. And you need to be walking in the spirit to discern all the things that are happening in the times that we're living in. For example, I don't know if you guys saw, but there was a Megan Fox interview with Glamour Magazine or something. She literally said that her and Machine Gun Kelly drink each other's blood, but only for ritual purposes. Don't worry, it's only for ritual purposes. And then she went on to say something like, yeah, I mean, he's more chaotic about it. Like, take a piece of broken glass, uh, cut my chest and say, take my soul or something like that. It's demonic. Here you have a celebrity openly telling you that they do, they drink each other's blood for ritual purposes. And people still like, oh, so inspiring. Like, what? You don't have to know Jesus to know that that's demonic and to know that that's wrong. And the amount of people that are there, like, that are unfazed, it's so beyond me. And again, it's one of those things where people are saying Hollywood is demonic, Hollywood is demonic. People don't believe it because it has a hold. Do you know what I mean? Celebrities do have a hold on people. And God said, there shall be no other gods but me. We are not to have any idols. And celebrities, like a lot of the empires of celebrity and stuff has fallen. But a lot of people are still like, it has a hold on them. Do you know what I mean? They don't even try to hide it. Like the devil doesn't even hide at all. And some people still don't see it. We are fighting spiritual battles. This is spiritual warfare. Like Ephesians 6 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, evil in high places. And it's just crazy that some people still don't see it. They still don't see it. Um, in other news, I got my Twitter back today, like almost a year and a half later. Last year, I lost my Twitter. They banned me, suspended me, whatever, for no reason at all. I remember tweeting a Trump meme that was hilarious and it was just like saying miss me yet or something. And then like an hour or so later, I got a message from Twitter saying that my account was suspended. They tried to say I had a copyright violation from a makeup tutorial of my face in 2016. So what? Like five years later, you're now saying, oh, we need to ban you for a copyright? Like, what does that even mean? Like, maybe it was a song I used in the makeup tutorial, but people don't get taken from Twitter from that. And I tried to appeal it, appeal it, and they would never respond. They would never respond to anything. So Elon Musk bought Twitter, and all of a sudden conservatives started getting their accounts back, like a whole wave. People on the left are now losing followers, and conservatives are now gaining followers by like tens of thousands. Like I saw one account gained like over 100,000 followers on Twitter in a day. It's just further proof that they were censoring conservatives and dissenting opinions on Twitter. And y'all don't think every social media platform is doing that. 
I know that they're doing that. I see my analytics. I see what these people do. And I'm like, it doesn't add up. Engagement goes up, comment, everything goes up, but then they make sure you lose just a few more followers than you gain. And I feel like it's a matter of time before all of this is going to get blown wide open and we're going to see even more than we've already been seeing with like Twitter and Google, like with their SEOs and stuff that's come to the surface. Personally, I don't trust Elon Musk because of the whole brain chips thing. Um, because of his family line, family history, like his background. However, it is a win as far as free speech goes that he's bringing people back. It's it's just a win. You know what I mean? I can't imagine being so afraid of other people's opinions that I want them to be deleted off of social media. Like that's what the block button's for. You can unfollow, you can block, you can like take people off your little space. But to want people to lose sponsorships, to it's cancel culture, to cancel them, to delete them and delete, you know, their voice off the Internet. And the Internet is the public square. It's where people go. More people are on Facebook than the Bible book. You know what I mean? Like, that's where people go. And to see people absolutely lose their minds on Twitter, like the left was absolutely losing their minds, saying, you're a liberal if you want controlled speech and you're a conservative if you want free speech. Like, no, 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 no. If you want controlled speech, you are an authoritarian, just point blank, period. It's just wild. It's just a clown world. And I personally, like, I don't like Twitter. I think it's super dark, a lot of bad energy. Um, however, I'm happy that I have it back now. So if I want to say anything cool, I can. I just think the whole the whole point is people should not be deleted for their voice. They shouldn't have to self-censor themselves. Like, what is hate speech anyway? Hate speech is subjective. It changes on someone's interpretation. Hate speech is another term for speech that I don't like. You can't remove people because you don't like what they say. Just block them and move on. It, it's just really simple. And it's crazy that so many people like don't realize how psycho they sound. Like it's actually a mental issue at this point to not believe in freedom and freedom of speech or only freedom for people that you agree with. I'm going to wrap this all up with a few things. Um, first and foremost, we are made in the image of God, right? And when we create something that God has asked us to, there is this whole level of joy and peace that is just unexplainable. And the season that I'm in right now, I don't think I've ever felt this fulfilled in my entire life. Like, it comes very close to the feeling I had when I first started YouTube and was creating content. When you follow what God asks you to, the devil sends in his special ops to try to deter you, to try to stop you. Do not let him. The only thing the devil can do is try to wear you out and try to exhaust you. Like it says in scripture, he'll try to exhaust you but no one can stop what god has decreed and if god asks you to do something do it be obedient you know breakthrough comes after obedience and just keep going one step at a time one step at a time one step at a time this project i've been working on has been for years now and i just can't wait to like scream it from the rooftops because it's so needed and i'm just so excited so if i'm not posting as much um, just know, like, I'm working all day, every day. This is the first time actually I've done my makeup in a hot minute. I've been on nonstop Zooms and calls and emails and working on this and just putting everything into this. And I am just, my heart is so, so happy, so happy right now. So hope you guys are all doing well. If there's any kind of content you want to see for YouTube, comment it down below. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how I can pray for you. Um, prayer requests, anything. Like, let's chat. I miss you guys. So comment down below. Like this video for more, like, card chats. Yeah, hope you guys are doing well. God bless, and I'll talk to you soon.